So I've been taking a lot of time recently to reflect on the good and the bad habits of how I manage my money. So I went back recently and I revisited the book Atomic Habits by James Clear. Now I've read this book before but not for a very long time but I was listening to the audio version this time and one thing that really struck out to me was James Clear mentioned that our habits shape our identity and vice versa our identity shapes our habits. And so this next story I want to tell you it's not really to do with money and it's not something that I'm proud of but I feel like it's relevant to the point of this video and what I'm trying to get across. So in November of 2022, I separated from my husband and for the next 14 months, we spent that time co-living in the family house. Now, the reason for that was he was buying me out of that house and I wasn't financially independent enough to be able to leave because I was always like the secondary income earner, he was the main income earner and I just wasn't making enough money to be able to up and leave and pay all the living, living costs that would be involved in moving out. So in the beginning, that started off okay, but in the end, it really got to a place where it really wasn't healthy. And I was coming home from work every afternoon and I was feeling very anxious and I was uncomfortable and I just didn't want to be in that living situation. So what happened was I ended up um, starting to use alcohol, I guess, as a little bit of an escapism. So I wasn't an alcoholic or anything, but I would come home every afternoon from work and I would have a couple of drinks as my way of re relaxing. So I guess that just became my new norm and that's how bad habits are sometimes formed. And then a couple of months ago, I finally had got my income up to enough where I felt like I would be able to move out. My financial settlement was also getting closer to being finalized. And I know once the financial settlement comes through, then I will have a little bit of security money. So I felt like it was the right time to be able to move out. But what happened was the first couple of nights that I moved into this house, I straight away did the same habit. I had a couple of drinks, you know, in the evening after work. And then it was on the second night and I went to bed that night and I lay there thinking about it and I was like, why am I having those couple of beers now before in the evening in this new house? Because in my head, I had this whole identity of myself that had been built up that when I move out, things were going to look different. When I move out, this was going to happen. When I move out, that's going to happen. And so I had all this identity of myself that would be when I moved out yet here I was with my old identity with my old identity doing these same bad habits so it was in that moment that I just it was like a light it was like a, a flick do you know what I mean and I made that decision instantly like no in this new house I don't need to relax I'm relaxed now <laughs> I don't need to feel stressed or anxious in this house this is my house so my whole identity shifted in that one moment as I lay there reflecting and from that moment on with no no drinks in this house I, it's been two months now I've not had a single drink inside this house since okay so where I'm going with this and the reason why I'm sharing that story that I'm not actually proud of but the reason was because when I heard James Clear say our habits shape our identity or our identity shapes our habits, it just was like a light bulb into me and it made me reflect on that story that I was feeling with the alcohol. But then it's got me thinking now about what is my identity around money and what do I need to change about my identity about money? Because I'm in this whole new season of life and I don't want to be doing the same things that I've done before or I'm just going to have the same results. So I now need to rebuild my money identity. I need to take charge of my financial situation so that I can become financially independent and I need to make new habits that actually align with the new identity that I want to create. So I won't be able to succeed on this financial journey if I don't change the negative beliefs that I have within me that surround me around money. So what my money identity has always been, and I'm sure many of you can relate, and I'm sure I'm not the only one, and many of you probably have the same identity around money as that I do. And those kind of things have been like, I'm not good with money. I'm broke. I don't have enough money. 
Um, I, I'll start a budget after I get out of debt or I can't charge that much, I'm not worth it or I can't charge that much because nobody's going to pay that much. So there's been so many negative things around money in my life and the wealthy people don't think like that. The wealthy people don't have that mindset. Let me tell you another story. If you're new here and you don't know what I do, I am a full-time reseller. I sell secondhand books on eBay. So I'm part of a reselling mentorship group that's hosted by a man named Tekken Sports. And Tekken Sports is a multi-million dollar uh, reseller in the community. Now, the other day I was on a Zoom call and Somebody asked Tekken Sports what he collected. Now, just for reference, a lot of resellers find the reselling um, journey because they actually start by things that they've got interest in that they've clicked. Like somebody might love collecting sports cards, so then they want to go and sell it. Somebody might love collecting Funko Pop toys, and so they get really into that and then they decide to sell it. Some people love vintage clothing and stuff. So Tech is a clothing seller and over the last 15 years he has probably found every single dope vintage t-shirt that you could possibly want <laughs> and so somebody asked tech in one of the zoom calls what do you collect you must have like this dope vintage t-shirt collection and tech's response to this was i the only thing i collect is dollar bills i collect dollar bills and that was like a little light bulb in my moment because I was like, this is the mindset of somebody wealthy. He made the comment, why would I collect something that's just sitting in a, in a cupboard doing nothing and not making me any money when I can sell that item and then snowball the profits and then go and buy something else and snowball those profits. And he basically said that if he'd kept t-shirts from 15 years ago, those t-shirts are probably worth $10,000 each now by the amount of times that he has snowballed the profits from that one sale and kept reselling and kept reselling and reselling from that one original sale. I hope that makes sense. But the point of the story is his answer was, I collect dollar bills. I have never ever heard anybody speak in that way. <laughs> and it's just, I can't stop thinking about it. That is the mindset of a wealthy man and it's not even like, oh, I need to collect $10,000. I'm collecting my next dollar bill. How can I get my next dollar bill? They're so focused on creating wealth instead of just having things or wasting their money on stuff that's unnecessarily or that doesn't hold any value to them. So, it, so for Tekken Sports, his values don't align with collecting items. His values align with collecting dollar bills. And I just thought that was a really interesting story. So I wanted to pop that in there because I personally can't stop thinking about it. And you know what? I want to start collecting dollar bills. So I only rely on myself now for making money, which means I need to educate myself around money so that I can learn more about personal finance. I can learn more about investment strategies for in the future. So when I'm in a position to be able to do some investing, I know how I can do it. So I now need to keep a budget, which is something that I have not done for many, many years. I need to now save money for emergencies. I don't just want to have like a $1,000 emergency um, account. Like, yes, I want a small emergency account like that with a couple of thousand dollars in it. But I also want to build on a stronger emergency account now because I'm simply relying on myself. So it's very important to me now to work on building myself a three monthly emergency account in case something really bad happens. So I've never been in a position where I've saved money every single week. I've never paid myself first, but I'm now in a position where I need to learn to save money because there's going to be emergencies that come up there's going to be big purchases what if I want to take the kids on a vacation like I need to be able to save money for all this stuff on top of learning about my re retirement and let's be honest guys here I don't have much of a re retirement savings plan because I've been a stay-at-home mum for the last 23 years who has either, either been stayed home with the children or been doing small side jobs on the side for all those years so it hasn't been a priority of mine to put money into my retirement or my superannuation or if you're in America you call it a 401k fund I think but I haven't made that a priority and now 
that I'm coming up almost 48 years old and I'm starting to look at my retirement fund and going, gee whiz, you know, I'm heading towards the age 50. Like it's not that many years until I'm supposedly meant to retire. And it's a little bit of a scary thing. So the other thing I need to learn about is my bad habits that cause the money leaks, you know, where the money is dropping down the hole and just going where I don't even know it's going. It's probably small things like cups of coffee or going out to lunch. Like I really need to look at those bad habits to see, you know, where I'm just wasting money that I could actually be saving instead. So for me now and you, if you've been in the same money mindset that I've been all these years, I think it's a matter of knowing and reflecting on what these self-limiting beliefs are around money and then it's going back and working out what role do those self-limiting beliefs play in my life currently and how am I going to go about healing from these? So I need to abolish all these self-limiting beliefs. I need to establish a new belief system around money and one that actually attracts money to me rather than has me repelling the money away from my life. So I guess the reasoning for this video, the moral of the story is that the first step in making change has to come with your self-identity and making that realization of what your actual self-identity is and what are the habits that you use and do on a daily basis that align with that self-identity. And if you don't like the self-identity, if you don't like those bad habits, then you need to create a new set of values and a new self-identity that you want to create new habits for that actually align with the person that you want to become. I don't want to be somebody that has a negative money mindset. I don't want to repel money away from me anymore. I want to be able to attract that money. I want to be able to have, you know, financial independence. I want to be able to give my kids a really great life and not be stressed and anxious feeling constantly about the money and where the next bill's, how the next bill's being paid. I don't want to ever feel like that any again. So I'm changing the identity of myself in how I think around money. And this is probably just the first step of many identities that I want to actually look at and see whether or not they actually align with the values that I have in my life. So the, but at the moment, my, my biggest thing is going on this new financial journey and I have to educate myself and I have to do as much learning as I can around money. And I hope that by me sharing my story, because so many of you have come to me with your own personal stories and I know so many of you are in the same situation as I am and I hate that for you. And I want you to be able to make the changes and if I can do it, you can do it too. So please like really take some time this week to maybe sit there and self-reflect on whether or not your habits that you're doing on a daily actually align with the identity that you want to have. Thank you guys. Thank you.